Welcome everybody to the Kaya Level 1 Edge Designations 2022 Prep Program. First of all, just to introduce myself, I run the program. My name is Russell. Your name is Jude. Oops. And I often get asked, what are my qualifications to be able to teach this particular class? And I say, well, I'm a Kaya charter holder as well. So we can put that over there. Um, in addition, I do have the CFA charter, the FRM charter, and I'm a South African chartered accountant as well. And often people say, well, why did you do all those designations? You seem very clever. And I say, no, not at all. The reason that we did all the designations is because it wouldn't look very good if I wanted to teach the designations and we didn't go and get them ourselves. So each and every one of those designations is a wonderful one, okay? The one we're going to be focusing on. And yes, at each designations, we do all of those, but we're going to be focusing on Kaya. Everybody asks with those designations which one comes first when you write your name which one do you put first as you can see i put kaya first over here because that's what we're doing right now but no extra importance to each and any one of them per se okay the purpose of this video is to give you an introduction first and foremost into what you can expect from kaya kai level one Kai Level 2 will talk a little bit about the program. We can talk about what we what to expect from the program, the structure of the program. And then secondly, I want to handle what EDGE designations as a prep provider brings to the party for you. So let's start off because, of course, without Kaya, we don't have a prep program. So let's give the most importance in the video to Kaya itself. And let's talk about Kaya and the Kaya Association and the structure of the program very briefly. Okay, first and foremost, okay, Kaya was one of the leading proponents of computer-based testing. When I talk about computer-based testing, and I talk about that in terms of the other designations that we teach, particularly CFA and FRM, Kaya was first to market with computer-based testing out of everybody. So props to them. They, they, they're a little bit ahead of the game. So well done to them but you can expect of course guys the exam that you write will be a computer based test okay study time if you do decide to do kaya okay i assume by watching this video you have an interest or are already registered in some form or another it's approximately 200 to 250 hours study time per level that's for kai level one and, and and again another reinvestment of 200 to 250 hours for kaya level two why do we give you a bit of a range over there that's of course depending on your level of experience depending on your background etc etc the exam itself is four hours you're going to be writing for four hours a total of 200 multiple choice questions you write a hundred in the first session and you write another hundred in the second session with a 30 minute break in between them okay is it difficult to do a hundred multiple choice questions in two hours well the maths will be itself out for you there's 120 minutes that's your two hours over there to do a hundred mcqs that translates to 72 seconds per MCQ. Is that quick? Yes. Very quick indeed. Okay, so just keep in mind guys that you are one of your challenges among what else I will talk about throughout this video in terms of Kai, one of your challenges is quite clearly time to answer the questions. And you and, and once you've done that the first time, you've done that in the morning or the first session, exam session one, you've written two hours and done 100 MCQs, you catch your breath for half an hour and you, they throw you back in for another two hours, another 100 MCQs. Just very briefly, when will the exam be? Your exam will be on the 28th, it's an exam window, 28th of February 
till the 11th of March. That is the time period that we will be, that the uh, exam window for the CHI Level 1 will be for 2022. Remember again, of course, that there is another writing for CHI Level 1 in 2022. We don't yet have those dates available, but that will be what we call the September window, okay, for those that wish to write in the second half of the year. Okay, that's a basic look at, at your exam. Okay, we talk about what's in the exam. A lot of people are aware that Kai, everyone says, well, oh, Kai have made massive changes for 2022. There's big stuff coming. They changed the syllabus, etc., etc. I'm going to go through that with you just to show you exactly um, where, for those that are trying to compare Kaya 2021 to Kaya 2022, I'll take you through those differences. And for those that are looking at Kaya for the very first time, I will show you what you can expect from the syllabus in 2022. We start off over here. There are six topics that are covered in the Kaya syllabus. The very first one is ethics. And what you notice about ethics very early on, there's a very big weighting for ethics. It's 15 to 25 percent um, weighting for ethics in your exam, which is which is big. OK, very briefly, I'm not going to go into this into any great detail in this particular video, but the subject matter for ethics for those that are familiar with the CFA syllabus is carbon copy the standards of professional conduct from the CFA syllabus, carbon copy. Okay. We then move down to your second level, uh, your, your second topic over here, okay, which is introduction to alternative investments, which I always laugh with people. It's nothing at all. Please don't expect it to be an intro. It's nothing of an intro. It goes quite detailed into things like derivatives, fixed income, statistics, quants, things like that, economics. It's no intro at all. And of course, that bears itself out by the exam weight. 20 to 28 percent is big. That's the biggest weighting in your exam. Unlikely that they would give that to just an intro, um, but it's called an intro. So, we, 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 but we will not be misled. Okay. We move on to real assets as our third topic, okay, 11 to 17 percent, okay. Where there's been a change now, if everyone was, if you're looking to try and compare 2020 to 21, okay, where there has been a change is there's been a bit of a shift around between private equity and hedge funds, okay. I'm not exactly sure what they want us to call it, okay. Um, the Wiley textbook calls it private securities, not private equity. Okay, so the, the Wiley textbook, which is the textbook that uh, that Kaya issue, calls it private securities. Yet in all of their material, the Kaya material itself and their workbook, they still stick with private equity. So it doesn't make much of a difference as long as we know what we're dealing with. Where the change came in for 2022 is there's been a reversal of weightings, okay? Hedge funds has gone down from 12 to 22, 11 to 17%, so slightly reduced weighting for hedge funds. And the 12 to 20 has now gone to private equity. Private equity or private securities used to be a slightly lower weighting. Now it has been given a slightly increased weighting Okay, and obviously we need to see um, how they make up those changes. What we're going to find is that private equity has increased, okay, the number of readings from three to five. There's the one big difference. And hedge funds has gone down from six readings to five. So there's your, this, by the way, is where all the differences are going to lie. For the changes from 21 to 22. In other words, private equity goes up. There's a, there, there is an added two readings and hedge funds has gone down one. And don't be misled when I tell you hedge funds have gone down one. All that they've done is they've taken two chapters that were separate chapters in 21 and they've just put them into one. So hedge funds has not changed at all. 
Okay, but if you're looking for the number of readings, yes, it's gone down by one, but it hasn't changed at all. Okay, the leopard still keeps its spots. It is what it was. And structured products is the last of our six topics, uh, and that re remains four readings, four chapters, okay, with a 10 to 14 percent exam weighting. Okay, so that is a basic look at your topic weight and a basic look at your syllabus that you can expect from Kaya level one. Talking about calculator policy, okay, and you might shout at me and say, but aren't, isn't the Hewlett-Packard allowed as well? And I say, yes, you're right. Of course, the Hewlett-Packard is allowed, but I didn't put it over here because we don't teach off it. I do give you in, uh, instruction how to use it in, in quite a few of our notes, but we, we, as well as all of my fellow prep providers, as far as I'm aware, recommend using the Texas and give all of their notes based then on the Texas. Okay. We have a look at where does your, what information do you need? And guys, remember, I'm still only talking from a Kaya perspective. I could work for Kaya, what I've told about them so far, but I haven't mentioned our program just yet. Okay, I will get onto that, but at this point, remember, I'm still just talking from a Kaya perspective. Okay, and let's have a look at some of the materials that are issued by them. Essentially, if one wanted to work directly from the Kaya textbooks, you would work off two textbooks. Number one is, the, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, for your ethics section, you would work purely on the SPC, the Standards of Professional Handbook, okay, 11th edition CFA Institute, okay. Slight difference for those that are from CFA or have done CFA before. You don't, of course, do, uh, according to the CFA book, Okay, there are seven standards. Of course, for Kaya, we just do the first six because the seventh standard relates very specifically to the CFA, the use of the CFA designation and CFA testing, which of course does not apply to Kaya. So just be mindful of that. That's book number one, the standards of professional conduct from the CFA. Book number two, and this is where Kaya made a massive difference, guys. Okay, it's the Wiley textbook, which is all electronic. Okay. Easy to use if one wanted to use it. We will we'll, we'll address the question later on, which I get very often. Should you use the textbook or should you use prep provider notes? We'll talk about that. But that is, it's a 2022 edition. It's brand new. It's spanking new. It's looking lovely. It's well illustrated. The authors are highly recommended. Not that they need my approbation, but it's a really is a, is a bit of a winner overall. Okay. Looking over here, guys, what else have Kaya changed? They've made the prep providers' life a little bit difficult. I hope they're listening. Okay. And they've changed from chapters to readings. So you can see over here, in the past, it used to be intro to alternative investments, chapters 1 through 8. Now it's readings 2.1 through till 2.8. 2.1 would correspond with chapter 1. 2.2 is chapter 2, etc. So they're moving, instead of calling things chapters now, they're calling them readings. So just be mindful if you've been in the system before. They're cosmetic changes. Don't let those upset you at all. Of course, as a prep provider, we will update our notes and make sure that they are called readings, not chapters any longer, etc., etc. Okay. But other than that, not much in the way of change. We go over our page over here. Okay. And they're just talking a little bit about more what Kaya provides to you. Okay. Fantastic stuff. Okay. They, in addition to the CFA textbook, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, in addition to the Wiley textbook, there are candidate handbooks, workbooks, and study guides, all three very valuable resources from Kaya. Very valuable indeed. Okay. What I want to do now is we've spoken a lot, quite a bit about Kaya. Okay, enough about that for now. What I want to do now is I want to just shift across and talk a little bit about um, Edge. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit about our program. Okay, and we will then have a look at the back end a little bit more specifically. What I spoke about earlier, okay, is the changes from the the, C, the 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 Kaya institute. Let's look at let's look at the actual changes that they have put through from Kaya. Okay, but we start off over here. 
Okay, and in terms of the EDGE program, okay, we like to work with the four C's. Okay, our first C is the consistency. And when I talk about consistency, guys, in terms of our EDGE program, okay, now, as I said earlier, I'm talking now very specifically about ourselves, EDGE as a prep provider. Okay, the first C is that of consistency. Okay, and consistency means everyday work. Everyday work, okay, and people often laugh at me and say, but what if you're having a terrible, horrible, meaningless day? Okay, we all have them, okay, but I always say, just put in five minutes on that day, and you say, well, why should you put in five minutes worth of work, okay, if that's all you're going to put in, and I say, that's in terms of the consistency, the everyday working, because if you put work in on a bad day, Okay, then the next day when you're feeling good, hopefully, and ready to get back in, you get back in straight away. Whereas if you don't put in the five minutes of the day before, you don't have a consistent work schedule, you miss one day, you miss two days, and you end up missing quite a, a batch of work, and you'll find with the Kai program that work tends to get quite big on you quite quickly. There's a lot of work in Kai. Not, not necessarily very difficult work, Okay, and I'm not meaning to be disrespectful to Kaya by any means, nor to those that write it. Okay, that's very challenging. But the, one of the keys to passing this particular exam is a lot of hard work. There's a lot of material that you need to get through, not necessarily just the difficulty of the work, but the, the volume. And the consistency will help you with that. That's the everyday work. Our second C we talk about, I'm going to try my absolute best to spell this correctly, is the commitment. The commitment to the program, and of course, guys, I don't really need to talk to professionals too much about this. We put it in, of course, as one of our Cs, but it's not necessarily where the focus is because I'm sure everyone that's joined the program is adequately committed. I talk about my third C, which I don't love, by the way, in terms of it's concentration, and it's not the right word, but it ended with a C, so I thought I better put it in to try and keep the, the four C's approach in, 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 in intact. Concentration is a little bit about what Steve Job talks about is in terms of focused work, okay? Focused learning, focused work. He, he often, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with any of his works, but Steve Jobs spoke, spoke about deep learning, okay? And that's what I want from you guys. I always say to people, I would far rather that you, when you did your work, when you are working on your Kaya material, that the work that you put in, you put in with deep focus, deep learning. Okay, rather put in one very good, one very focused hour than four hours, and you come out after your four hours and you say, um, yeah, what did I study? Um, not really sure. I can't remember too much about it. I was very tired. Uh, often I say rather put in one good hour, go to bed early, and then you'll catch up a little bit the next day. But deep focused learning is always preferred. And the last one we put in there is called calm. Now calm is, remember this is just Kaya. No disrespect, of course, but it's just Kaya, okay? And it's not enough changing hopefully it will be when you get it of course and it'll change your career we hope but remember there are more important things as well your health okay mental health physical health if you're an exerciser keep on exercising eat well if you go to a movie once a week to, to relax keep doing that keep calm keep relaxed keep normal keep sane as best as one can um yeah okay that calm i like very much because it is a, is a great recipe for success okay we then talk about a little bit about okay other c's that people like to put in okay um crying i don't love that one at all we're not going to cry that goes against my fourth c which is to keep calm other ones i've heard are add chocolates that, that c that you can add with pleasure if that's part of your regime good for you you go right ahead okay and keep that in place Okay, that's our approach to work over here, guys. Okay, I'm not going to spend too much more time, okay? One or two little points as well I'd like to mention. I'm going to go back a little bit. We're shifting around a bit over here just to talk back about the Kaya program, okay? 
we do provide you with a, a, a formula sheet because most of the formulas in, in Chi Level 1 need to be learned by heart. Okay. Chi differs a little bit from both CFA and FRM in terms of how they ask their question. I'm just going to take you back over here, guys. When we mention that there's 100 MCQs, okay, you've got two different formats. There's A, Bs, and Cs. In other words, there's three options sometimes. And some questions have got four options. Okay. Which one do, and we don't know which one they're going to use. They use them interchangeably for the most part. So CFA only uses three. FRM only uses four options, A, B, C, and D. Kaya uses both. Okay, so just be mindful of that when you're looking at, when you're doing your exam. Okay, how much do you need to pass the Kaya exam? Well, Kaya are one of the very few honest ones, dare I say that, okay, in terms of designations. And they say if you get 70, you pass. The pass mark may be a bit lower, but if you get 70, you pass, and that gives us a nice indication of where we need to position ourselves. When do you get results for CHI Level 3? Three weeks after the exam window closes. So if I take you back up here, your exam window, as you can see here, will close on the 11th of March. Add three weeks to that, and Kaya are very reliable in this, in this respect. Add three weeks to the... 11th of March, and to the day you can expect your results. Okay. I'm still going to talk about and go through the detailed changes that you can expect in the CHI Level 1 syllabus from last year. We'll have a deep, a good look at the syllabus, but just before that, I want to show you what you can get from Edge. Okay. I want to go through this just very briefly because um, there's a little bit of confusion sometimes among students when they go to our website, exactly what is being offered, the differences. I'm going to show you that now. Predominantly, we offer three options. And let me take you through those three options. There's option number one. Okay. We've got option number two. And then, of course, option three. Option number one, okay, will give you a complete set of notes. We call these our edge notes, okay. And again, I'll just discuss this briefly. Are they sufficient standalone enough without using anything else? The answer to that is yes, they are. Okay. Would I like you to have a look at the Wiley textbook? I think the Wiley textbook is fantastically well written. The challenge sometimes students find is that it's, uh, it's very extensive. Okay. Have you got time to go through it all? Well, depending on your time. If you do, it's a very, very valuable resource. Okay. If not, yes, our edge notes are extensive. They go through absolutely everything. We go through every single learning objective from the very first one to the very last one. Nothing is left out. So you cover every single thing in the syllabus via the edge notes. You can be guaranteed of that. And you get notes, a complete set of edge notes. By the way, guys, for those that wanted to know, um, I'll just put it in a different color so we can see the differences. All notes are in PDF format. So yes, easy downloadable and easy to use. Okay, you can print them if you like. There's no printing restrictions. We don't, I know some providers say you can only print one page at a time or something like that or two pages. I'm not sure exactly. Um, yeah, you can print as much as you like. Those are the notes. Okay, good. In addition, okay, to the notes, okay, we, we, we of course, we've got formula sheets. Okay, for both of those. Okay. We've got questions at the end of every chapter. Okay. And what I want to show you over here is on those questions, we offer them to the students in two formats. Okay. In the back of the notes, once you finish the notes, all the questions are there for you. Also in PDF format. But we also offer you exactly those same questions in QBank format if you wish to do them electronically, which I do suggest that you start to get practice with because, of course, your exam will be in electronic format. Okay, so you've got them in, but it is important to remember, okay, they're the same questions. Okay, you could do them in any format that you like. We offer you both. And then, of course, 
what everybody loves are the videos. Okay, and the videos again take you extensively through all of the notes. Okay, um, from every single learning objective from top to bottom. So yes, you can expect many many hours of video um, to go through all of the notes. Okay, and when we look at that, again people say, well, what format is that? If all of our material, okay, is in YouTube format. Okay, which is nice and easy to view. One of those that everybody is quite familiar with. Okay, we then say, to, well, then what's the difference between the two options, option one and option two? Option one carries with it a Zoom session. Option two, no Zoom. Obviously, there is a difference in price, of course. What does the Zoom session do? Well, we meet once every couple of weeks. I think we meet six times altogether at the end of each of the topics. And what we cover in those particular Zoom sessions, first of all, the Zoom session belongs to the student, okay, belongs to you guys, number first and foremost. And then what we do in those sessions, we handle all your queries, your concerns, your questions. It's a live session that we meet together, okay. In addition to those sessions, I go through some difficult concepts in the Zoom sessions, which are live, and we do some questions together as well. Very valuable. It's about an hour and a half to two hours, and we meet at the end of every one of the major topics of the six. So that's the only difference then between option number one and option number two. Now, option three is a different offering to the first two. So when we're looking at the various options, you'll either purchase option one or option two. You'll never go for both. The key decider between which one you want to go for is are you interested in the Zoom sessions or not? When I move across to option three, this is a revision program. Okay. And again, you get notes. But these, of course, are revision notes. Okay. Um, not, of course, as detailed as the notes for option one and option two because they are revision notes. You also get a formula sheet over here. You also get the videos that relate to those notes in detail as well. Okay, that's approximately 16 hours worth of video that relates back to those notes. Okay, and in the end you get three full exams. When I talk about a full exam, okay, that is exam one and exam two. So it's six exams in total, six times 100 MCQs. Okay. Those are our three options, and, and what most students like to do is as we get close towards uh, exam time, a month, a month and a half out, then people start to look at option number three. That's But, but it's a completely separate offering for those that wish to, to, to look at that one. We've also got other options as well. If you do, do have a look on our website, let me give you the web address. It's www.edge.com. designations.com that's our website okay and other things that we other separate packages that we like to make use of as well if you look on the website okay you can have QBank only if you just wish to go just purely for the for the QBank we've also just got an offering a notes only offering all you do is you get a set of notes that you would get same as option one and option two a complete comprehensive set of notes. We also have an exam option only. Okay, so the various options that are available to you, you can make use of those as you wish. Just go and have a look at the website. I want to hop across now and have a quick look at the syllabus. Okay. When we look we talk about the syllabus over here, okay, this is the detailed syllabus provided to us by Kaya. What I'm going to show you as well as we go through is where are the changes for those that are looking specifically from 2021 to 2022. So as you look through topic one, two, and three, almost zero changes, nothing over there. I've made the changes in purple so you can see them nice and easily. Uh, by the way, uh, purple is our Kaya level one color. Uh, often students ask me, why do I go for different colors for different designations? Uh, is it there to help the students? And I say, yes, I hope it does help the students. But more importantly, at least I know where I am. If I'm doing light blue, that's CFA level one. Orange, level two. Uh, 
green CFA level 3 and then purple CFA level 1. We've got a lovely pink color for Kaya level 2. So Kaya level 1 purple, Kaya level 2 is a bit of a pinky color. Something to look forward to when you got, once you've gone past level 1. Okay, when I move across here guys to uh, private equity, okay, which is topic number 4, you can see these are the new topics that have been introduced, okay. Private equity, FOF, Fund of Funds, and Evolution of Investing in Private Equity. Those are the two changes that we see over here in Kai Level 1. Okay, What you see then, and, and, and just remember, of course, that the weighting has gone 12 to 20. It was slightly reduced before. Hedge Funds has gone is now been reduced in weighting. It's gone down to 11 to 17. That's another change there. But what do you notice about reading 5.3 is you've got event driven and relative value fund hedge funds now being combined into one reading previously okay they were two separate readings so previously you would have had six okay separate uh, chapter six separate readings now you've got five but remember no change in syllabus at all because okay the uh, e event driven and relative value have just been uh, put into one reading. Okay, so here we go guys if you want to have a quick look over there Okay, that is the detail of the syllabus that you're going to be looking at Okay, there is topic one professional standards and ethics, which is purely a carbon copy guys coming out of the CFA syllabus Topic two is introduction to alternatives. That is your big one. There are Eight readings over there. No change 21 to 22 Real assets has got five readings or five chapters again no change 21 to 22 private equity we see changes there are two new readings introduced in 2022 hedge funds okay uh, we have had two readings compressed into one and the weighting has gone down slightly and structured products is four readings no change from 2021 those are the basic changes and syllabus that one can expect in Kaya level one. And the last thing I want to just briefly address over here, guys, is our timetable. Okay. And the timetable is predominantly okay for those that are doing the Zoom sessions. Okay. And as you can see, okay, here are the sessions. The very first Zoom session that we have will be on the 17th of October 21. And what I mentioned a little bit earlier, okay, is that in order, when you come to those Zoom sessions, for example, as you can see, then the first Zoom session is on the 17th of October, okay. And the Zoom sessions, as I mentioned earlier, belong to the student. You can come to those sessions, ask what you like what's troubling you, what's concerning you, any questions of, of any nature, okay. In addition, in those sessions, I do like to go over some more, diff if there is some really hectic, difficult work perhaps that we need to look at, I, I do those in those sessions, and we also look at some difficult questions in those as well. They run for approximately an hour and a half to two hours on the back end, depending on how long people can tolerate Zoom for. But having said that, if you look at the Zoom session, that will be on the 17th of October coming up, okay? So then I put over here, date to be completed by, in other words, when you come to that session on the 17th of October, I do expect you to have covered professional standards and ethics. And how so? Remember, you've got access to our notes, videos, and questions. So you will have done all of that before you come and attend the Zoom session. That way you get maximum value from the Zoom sessions. And away we go. And just to try and make it time easy for everybody those in south africa it's three o'clock on a sunday afternoon in new york it's nine o'clock sunday morning london it's one o'clock uh, in the afternoon depending on whether there's time saving or not daylight uh, saving over there and hong kong it's a little bit later on but all on the same day of course sunday we run the same session for everybody um trying tr to try and accommodate all around the world the different time, the time zones. Remember, these Zoom sessions, if you're not able to attend them, but you'd like to get the value of them, we do, of course, record them all and then place them onto the Google Classroom from which we disseminate all our information. 
Okay, and just to conclude, that's everything that I want to go through, guys. Just to conclude, to leave you with a little bit of details, okay? Let me give you my own personal email address. It's russellj at ebs.co.za. Feel free to email me if there's anything I can help you with. Any cares, concerns, questions you may have with pleasure, pop those through. And then just our website that you can have a look at all of our various offerings. It's www edge designations.com and on that note we will conclude this particular session as i say guys please feel free to reach out if i can help with anything but at this point we'll conclude the session wishing everybody that is doing chi level one great success and more importantly great joy in the program as you go through that and hopefully we'll chat to you all soon